Hi there. We've already seen quite a few examples of functions and we will see many more. In this video, I would like to stop for a moment and ask the following questions. Given a function, what numbers can you put into it and what numbers do you want to put into it? Let me explain what I mean. First of all, we have defined functions in terms of formulas. For example, fx equals 1 divided by x minus 3. But some formulas do not make sense for all values of x. Here, fx is not defined for x equal to 3. To understand the behavior of a function, you have to know for which input values it is defined. As for the second question, consider the following example. If a cube has edges of side x, its volume is equal to x cubed. This is the volume function of the cube. In principle, this function is defined for all values of x, but given the context, it makes no sense to put in negative numbers. So in this case, it's natural to restrict the input values to numbers larger than or equal to zero. Given a function, it's often natural or even necessary to restrict the set of input values. That is, we have to choose the domain of the function. Remember the, remember the setup. A function is defined by three pieces of data. The domain, the set of possible inputs, the codomain, a set in which the outputs end up, and a rule that associates to every element in the domain an element in the codomain. In previous videos, we mainly focused on the rule that tells you how to get from the input to the output. Now, I'd like to look more closely at the domain. As an example, consider the function fx equal to 2 plus square root of x minus 3. I did not specify the domain. What options do we have? Well, the only restriction is that we cannot take square roots of negative numbers. So in this case, the function is defined precisely for x minus 3 larger than or equal to 0. That is, x must be larger than or equal to 3. The set of such x is the largest possible domain we can choose, called the maximal domain. In this case, it is the interval 3 to infinity, including 3. Often we will not mention the domain of function explicitly and silently take it to be the maximal domain. However, sometimes the context makes restrictions natural. For example, think again of the volume function of a cube. The maximal domain is a set of all real numbers, which we denote by r. But given the context, it's natural to restrict to the set of numbers larger than or equal to zero, since only then the volume makes sense. Okay. Enough about the input side of functions. What about the output side? There are two related concepts here, codomain and range. Remember, the codomain is a set that contains the possible outputs of the function. And let me stress here, I say it contains. It does not have to be exactly equal to the set of possible outputs. You can take it larger if you like. Since every function that we consider produces real numbers, we can just take the set of all real numbers as a codomain. From now on, we will always make this choice. Much more interesting is the range of a function. This is precisely the set of all possible values that the function can attain. Note, it can be smaller than the full codomain. Let's look again at the example function. fx equal to 2 plus square root of x minus 3. In this case, the range is the interval from 2 to infinity. You can clearly see this from the graph. It starts at height equal to 2 and then keeps increasing. In general, the range is the set of all y values for which f x equal to y has a solution. And indeed, you can show that for this function, the equation has a solution precisely if y is larger than or equal to 2. I invite you to try that yourself. The range of a function may depend on the chosen domain. And to illustrate this, let me return to the cube once more. The maximal domain is the set of all real numbers. In that case, the range is the set of all real numbers as well. But for the natural domain, we left out the negative values of x. Choosing this domain, the range is also the set of all numbers larger than or equal to zero. And this makes sense, since volumes cannot be negative. To summarize, we considered domain, codomain and range. If we do not specify the domain of a function, we just take it to be maximal. Sometimes the context makes it more natural to restrict the domain. We will always take the codomain equal to r. And finally, remember that the range depends on the chosen domain. 
In general, determining the maximal domain and the range of a given function involves solving equations and inequalities. This can be quite difficult, and we will return to these matters in week 3 and 4 of the course. In the following exercises, you can practice with domains and ranges of standard functions and simple combinations. Good luck!